Welcome to the Rice Entomology Research Program. I'm Blake Wilson and I oversee the pest management research along with Dr. Mike Stout, who coordinates a lot of our campus research activities. And this work is supported by an exceptional staff of research associates, graduate students, and undergraduate student workers. Most of our research focuses on the rice water weevil, which is the most damaging insect pest of rice in Louisiana and throughout the Mid-South. The weevil larvae will feed on rice roots in the soil after the establishment of the permanent flood. They can have a dramatic effect on plant health. In my left hand is the root system of a plant that was protected with uh, insecticidal seed treatment. In my right hand with the severely pruned root system is a plant that was exposed to natural weevil infestations here on the rice research station. And you can imagine this significant root pruning would have a severe impact on plant health. Both of these plants were planted on the same day and are the same variety. These plots here to my left are the insecticidal protected plots. They're slightly taller than these plots here behind me to my right, which were left exposed to weevil infestations. It appears to be a subtle difference now but the impacts of this root pruning will become more apparent as the season progresses. On average, if no weevil control tactics are used, rice water weevil can cause 5 to 10 percent yield losses uh, across the state. In severe cases, yield losses can exceed 25 to 30 percent. And so farmers must have a rice water weevil management plan in place before going into the season. Because rice water weevil larvae feed on the roots in the soil, that creates some difficult challenges when researching them. However, I thought the video uh, field day opportunity would be a good time to demonstrate the soil coring process that we use to quantify rice water weevil infestations. A soil core consists of two to three rice plants, their root systems, and the surrounding soil. Core samples are taken approximately four weeks after establishment of permanent flood to allow for sufficient weevil infestations to develop. We will take two to three cores per plot at two dates during the growing season. Cores are then placed in individual bags and taken to the washing station for processing and counting weevils. Once our core samples are collected from the field, we bring them to our washing station each sample is first rinsed into a mesh bucket where the sediment is removed from the roots. The larger debris along with the weevil larvae is then collected in that mesh bucket. Next, those samples are brought over to our counting stations. Each bucket is dipped in a saltwater solution which allows the weevils to rise to the top of the water where they can be counted. We then use a suction apparatus to remove those weevil larvae as they're counted to avoid recording the same larvae twice. All our data are logged on data loggers and recorded on data sheets before they're entered and analyzed. This is a very labor intensive and time consuming process that requires uh, us to stagger our planting dates so that the data collection can be spread out over the entire summer. We typically start planting in mid-March and we just planted our, our final planting the first week of June. We'll core three to four days a week and, and wash those samples through about mid-August when our later planted tests are completed. And so over the course of the summer, we'll take core samples from over a thousand different research plots and wash somewhere in the neighborhood between uh, five to six thousand core samples. A lot of our research on the station looks at insecticidal seed treatments, which have become a critical part of weevil management. We're looking at uh, efficacy of new products as well as comparing economics of using multiple products to control a broader spectrum of pests. Additional studies here on station are looking at combining seed treatments with cultural management strategies such as delayed flood, as well as uh, examining 
resistant varieties, and other aspects of weevil management. Some of our off-station trials uh, are investigating apple snails. These are large invasive snails that have become uh, very prevalent in some rice and crawfish ponds, particularly around the Mermintal and Vermilion River basins. These are large snails about as big as your fist or an apple and they uh, lay bright pink egg masses so their appearance on new farms is, is very obvious. We're tracking their spread and figuring out what factors are going to be involved uh, in, pop, in their population control. Although we're seeing high populations in rice fields, uh, most of the impact has been in crawfish ponds where producers are catching in some cases more apple snails than they are crawfish and apple snails have been observed clogging the entrance to the crawfish traps. Some fields have been so severely impacted that they had to be uh, stopped fishing early and eventually drained. We're exploring potential solutions to control the snails that are going to be compatible with crawfish production and not harm those crawfish. Uh, I'm not going to have time to go over all the different research results but we've included a lot of content along with the field day video. I encourage you to explore that. There's information on apple snails, seed treatments, and other aspects of our research and pest management. There's also a survey I encourage farmers to fill out so we can get a, a good idea of what pest management practices are currently being utilized throughout the state. Um, I encourage you to contact me directly or your local extension agent if you have any questions about any of the work we're doing or about other insect related issues. And we'd be happy to answer those. And lastly, I'd like to thank the Louisiana Rice Research Board for their support. Without that funding, we wouldn't be able to uh, hire the personnel we need to get this work done. Thank you. Mm -hmm.